And welcome back to LA Fish Guys, part two, episode 121. We've already wiped the interior free of algae, brushed off the rock foundation, vacuumed the gravel bed, and have done a 40 gallon water change, as well as just finished replacing the second set of decorative corals in this awesome 400 gallon bowfront aquarium system. So now that we've got the pH buffer in, we put the corals back in, and of course, obviously put the new water back in. We've got some little wavy lines where the water surface was. I wanna go through and wipe those down so we don't see them. The wavy lines at the surface are the results of the powdered pH buffer I added just a little bit ago. The pad on the long stick will easily and quickly wipe this away, and with that long handle, I can reach all four panels from this one position on the ladder. Part of finalizing the cleaning process is wiping of the acrylic lids that cover the openings on top of the acrylic tank. And with the cleaning of the inside of the aquarium now completed, we've still not seen the third of the three recently added trigger fish. There's a pink tail trigger fish and a small clown trigger fish, but it's the blue jaw trigger fish that we have not seen yet since we added him over two weeks ago. Aside from the pygmy angels and a longhorn cowfish, we've had minimal losses in the tank so far. Okay, so it's now time to clean the screen on the algae scrubber. We're also gonna change the bulbs in the algae scrubber. The screen in the algae scrubber is what the water flows over and where the algae grows. I clean this weekly. The bulbs are fluorescent and positioned on opposite sides of the screen. Fluorescent bulbs are inexpensive, but their color and intensity decrease quickly. I'll start first by removing the spray rod with screen from the scrubber and scraping off the algae. Got some interesting algae growing on there. So we've got a lot of algae on the screen. We'll just simply clean it off here in the sink. It's recommended to remove the screen from the spray rod and using a sharp edge of sorts, scraping the algae off the screen. The idea is that the algae, which grew quickly, consumed nutrients from the aquarium water. With the physical removal of the algae off the screen, the algae and the nutrients within are now physically removed from the system. Ouch. To provide the greatest amount of light to grow the greatest amount of algae, requires replacement of the fluorescent bulbs frequently. Stay tuned as we'll replace those bulbs next. you're near Long Beach, California, take the time to stop in at Age of Aquariums, 2642 Cherry Avenue, just off the 405 freeway near Signal Hill. Age of Aquariums carries a full line of dry goods, supplements, and exotic equipment. Age of Aquariums also carries a wide assortment of living corals, coral frags, as well as fresh and saltwater fish, ranging from the usual, the unusual, and the bazaar. Age of Aquariums is located at 2642 Cherry Avenue, Long Beach, California, near Signal Hill. Open seven days a week. Call 562-438-6252 or visit ageofaquariums.biz. 
Have you made your plans yet to attend the Marine Aquarium Expo this coming April 6th and 7th of 2013? This is the largest aquarium consumer trade show in North America and a destination spot for marine hobbyists and coral frag enthusiasts. Held at the Orange County Fair and Event Center and featuring over 70 exhibitors, speakers, demonstrations, and a huge opportunity drawing. There's even a fin zone for entertaining young hobbyists. That's the Marine Aquarium Expo at the Orange County Fairgrounds this coming April 6th and 7th, Saturday 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Adults $15, senior and military only $10, and kids under 12 are free. For more information, visit MarineAquariumExpo.com. Reef Hobbyist Magazine believes that our hobby, our fellow hobbyists, and the animals in our care are best served by the free distribution of quality information. Reef Hobbyist Magazine provides hobbyists with critical husbandry information with an emphasis on marine ornamental breeding efforts. Reef Hobbyist Magazine is available for free in local fish stores across the country, or you can subscribe at www.reefhobbyistmagazine.com. We want to clean on the inside of the scrubber as well. In addition to the algae screen, the inside panels of the algae scrubber need to be cleaned as well. If you can't get light to the algaes on the screens, how can you expect to grow algae? With the inside of the scrubber cleaned, I can now reposition the spray rod and screen. The scrubber unit has enclosures on both sides of itself. These enclosures hold to each fluorescent bulbs. The enclosures slip easily from the sides of the algae scrubber unit. By sliding away the lens or the clear cover from the light enclosure, I can gain access to the interior where the bulbs are attached. It might be better to allow a little bit of time for the bulbs to cool down a bit. But with the use of a towel, I can reach in, twist out the old bulbs, and not burn my fingertips. With the bulbs replaced and tested, I can now slide in the lens and slip the enclosures back onto the sides of the algae scrubber. And by using the union fitting, I can reconnect the water supply line to the unit. And then by placing the cover on top, and the algae scrubber's taken care of. Having now completed what I'd call a normal service of this 400 gallon Bowfront Aquarium, in quick review, we removed the dirty set of corals, wiped the interior free of the algae growth, brushed off the foundation rocks, vacuumed the gravel, exchanged 40 gallons of water, and replaced the decorative corals with a clean set, and then cleaned out the algae scrubber. This usually takes about three hours, and as you can see, the results are spectacular. So we got one last thing to do, and that's to feed the tank. I enjoy it because I like to see the fish come out and at the same time it allows me the chance to see how the fish are interacting with each other, how they're interacting with the food, which food they like, and if they're eating or not eating. So let's go get a little bit of food and also see if that blue jaw trigger comes out. The foods I'm using are a frozen food along with a small amount of green vegetable or algae based flake food. The frozen foods are a variety version consisting of mysa shrimp, squid, clams, mussels, and krill. Additionally, I add a gelatin-based fish food to help the fish put on some bulk. Some of the food is small in size and settles quickly, but allows for the butterfly fish to pick at it throughout the day. And there, do you see it? The blue jaw trigger fish.
So that's the current status of the big 400 gallon bow front. Hopefully you enjoyed yourself, hopefully you learned something, and hopefully we'll see you for the next episode. Until then, keep moving forward.